In today's demo we will make this really nicely styled table and I'm not so much going for things like background color. I'm looking at how do we get the sizing of the cells or the columns you could say but they're really table cells. Uh, how do we get the sizing, the width especially, exactly how we want it. So it's going to be a really focused video today and we'll look at fixed uh, like pixel widths or percentages um, and how to get the table to the table container to also be sized appropriately. Uh, based on its contents. So if you want to learn about that, stick around. All right, so here we have the same table, but I have stripped all of my nice width settings on the table, and you can see it's just doing whatever it wants to do here. Um, it's taking up the entire width of the viewport, and um, the columns are just, there's no organization to it. Uh, these buttons over here are just doing whatever they need to um, house the text inside of them. So this is obviously not what we want. So we're gonna go into the code. So I've got everything except the width already set up. Um, just to save time, of course, didn't wanna to have to type all this out for the video, but here we are. Uh, so before we look at exactly the width, I want to talk about the table structure. Uh, it's very important to know that for a material UI table, this is, I'm specifically using material UI version five here, the new version that came out a couple months ago but very, very similar in Material UI before. And um, the table structure is, is the same in both versions, but um, so the table, it's not column focused. Uh, it, the Material UI data grid is, it actually has a column prop. And so sometimes people will think that the table will be the same way, but the table we'll see is actually kind of cell or I guess row focused might be a better way to say it. But the first thing that you'll have is a table container, and that one is optional, but I'm going to use it here. And then inside of that, you actually have your table component. And then if you have uh, headers like these, titles, or I'd say column headers, except of course it's not column focused, but then you will have this table header. And the nice thing is with this table that I have, um, this table header, it's actually where we will set the width sizing for our rows. And so like each, like this food cell or the calories cell, um, if I set width up here, it will actually affect all of these cells. I don't have to reset the width for the, the body cells. <laughs> so like I said, um, it's not column focused. So we see table, table head, table row. So that will contain um, the cells. And then, then we see table cell. So even though it's not column focused, you could almost think of the table cells as the column, um, kind of. So first let's look at this. I have the table row that contains the cells that will be for the titles. And then I have one more, uh, one more important section after the table head with that table row and table cells in it. I have the table body. So the body, uh, we can see it's actually going to loop through all the data. So what that means is I only have to code one more table row and then it will repeat itself. It'll spit out a whole bunch of table rows. But anyway, the nice thing is I only have to code one more table row and the table cells in it. Um, so these table cells, and we see a button here, these are the ones that actually contain the data. So like we see row.calories, that is from our, our data um, up here. So uh, yeah, I use this create data thing to populate this rows array. So anyway, um, so that gives an outline of the structure of the table and how it's table cell focused instead of column focused. However, when I set styling on these table cells, then it almost is kind of like using a row because it's just going to be repeated. I have to set it in one spot. Uh, excuse me, I said table row. It's almost kind of like using tables, table columns because I set it in one spot or two in this case. Specifically, I set it for the head section and then for the body section. But I set styling in those cells and then it just gets repeated um, again and again. So it's actually conceptually a little different but not completely different than say a data grid which is column focused. So now that we have an understanding of that and, and part of why I dove into that is because I see, um, I do keyword research before I write an article or make a video and there's more searches for material UI table column width than there are for uh, table cell width, material UI table cell width. But if you have a proper understanding of 
material UI table, you know that what you actually want is to set the cell width, not the column width. So um, let's take a look again. Here's what we have. So we need to do a couple important things. First, we need to constrain the table container in some way. And then second, we need to focus on, um, let's say these rows that just have text in them, or the, the columns, the cells that just have text in them. And then finally, we'll see if we need to do anything special for these buttons. So let's jump back to the code. So this is MUI version five. We're using the SX prop here. I left a nice space to remind myself. Um, what we actually want here is something called width max content. So let's take a look at what that does. It does its job better if I use proper syntax. There we go. Okay, so it looks funny, but we've kind of got a start here of constraining it to not just explode. Um, what max content does is it actually says, uh, what width do my contents need? That's as wide as I will be. So instead of just width 100%, which was effectively what was happening before, then um, we're just in a better place with uh, actually having the table be cognizant of its own internal, um, its children's width needs, and then not being, not having any width beyond that. So along with that, I added a little bit of padding, just padding once that's using the material UI utility system for adding that padding. So let's see, it looks like it added a padding of eight all around, setting padding one. So that's not one PX, that's one going into the styling utility and uh, seeing what the value for one is, which is eight PX. And that is actually something you could override if you wanted. So the next section is we'll set the width on these table cells that are in the table head. I did this just to point out a syntax, um, I don't know, a, a useful syntax that you can do. So if you have something similar for all of your cells, then um, like a styling, uh, if you have a, a styling that you wanna perpetuate in all of a certain kind of component, you can actually just create a const and say, okay, here's my, here's my object, uh, my value, and put it in all of these like this. So um, in addition to that, and more to just show off how the syntax works, then I'm actually gonna set width 100 in there. So I could have put this in the table styling and that would have actually made more sense. However, since I didn't put it in there, since that's just showing off the syntax, how about we actually show that this one can be set to a percent. Um, so maybe we'll see what that looks like. So here are tables taking proper shape. Uh, let's see, make sure these are actually 100. Looks like they are. So that's great. Now the real question is, all that we set was the width in the uh, header section. Let's look at the body. Awesome, these are also at width 100. Let's take a look at this last uh, column. I hate to use that phrase on a material UI table, but we'll look at this last column. So this is interesting, it set it to 137. So let's see, these are all, this one's a little bit bigger and we'll get into that right uh, for a moment. But anyway, so the question is, if I set this last column to width of 25%, what is it 25% of? So just thinking off the top of my head real fast, these four add up to roughly 100 or 400, a little bit more than that right now, um, cause, but we'll fix that. There's something going on with the buttons that we need to fix to get this first column at a width of 100. But anyway, um, so it's probably saying, okay, um, the first four add up to about 400, I need to be 25% of the total of those 400 plus, you know, whatever my width is here. And so it has to kind of dynamically calculate that. So um, the total width here, let's take a look. Five hundred and forty-eight, And so I bet that this 137 is almost uh, exactly 25% of that. So it's pretty smart that it can calculate that. So, um, and I haven't done the math to confirm that, but um, hopefully I'm not wrong in my YouTube video, we'll see. 
So the last thing that we need to look at is that button that I mentioned. And um, here's the table cell that contains it. And once again, this is in the table body, table row, we're repeating these, um, we're looping through the data and constructing these cells dynamically. We've got this button. So it looks like the button just kind of naturally, maybe some of them have a little too much text in them or something. And so it wants to size, it wants to be sized um, to contain that text nicely. And so that's pushing our column out. Um, but one thing that we can do, I think, is we would probably just set, let's say a max width on that. So I'll set a max width on that button. Let's see if that worked. Yep, there we go. So the button has a max width of 100. And that also set our column here, if you want to call it that, our table cell uh, for that column, all of our table cells in that vertical. I'll just say that in that vertical. Um, that set them all to uh, 100 width. But also, we've still got some buttons that are too short, just because they don't need all the width. So let's set, um, let's say min width and see what happens. So that worked. So why did I set max width and min width instead of just width 100? I'll show you what happens when I set just width 100. It's, it's working. Set width 100 there. Let's see what happens there. I think that must be what I did when I was playing around with it. And yeah, I think I did this and then width 100%. Let's give this a try. I'm doing something experimental here because I actually got it to be too big before. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here I've set the table cell width 100. And here I'm just showing off something to avoid doing. Uh, I've set the, uh, uh, when I was doing this the first time, I set the table cell to 100. And then I was looking at it wondering why it was bigger than that. And I had the button at width 100%. Um, pretty much, uh, I think the last button here needed more room than 100. And so this width 100%, it caused all of them to take up at least um, to fill up their container, but the button that was too big pushed the uh, table cell past 100 because it needed to contain it. So anyway, it uh, looks like we can just set a max width, or really just a width here. I don't think we even need a max width and min width. There we go. So I set the width of 100 on the button itself. That's better than the min width. So anyway, now we've got that nicely styled table that we were looking at originally. So um, hopefully this helps. I know that there's a lot of searches for um, table width and table cell width and table column width. And hopefully this answers all of them because we got our, our cell widths and we also figured out how to get the entire table, the table container, um, to style nicely according to the width of its contents. So I hope that you consider subscribing, and um, I hope that this was helpful, and I'll see you for the next video.